Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be breaking down an interesting storm that'll be impacting the United States as we go into later this week that'll increase the risk for severe weather. Meanwhile, we'll be having a huge weather pattern change that'll be bringing a heat wave to one part of the country while another area of the country will be dealing with a large cool down. I'll give you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast, but let's first begin begin with what's happening across the United States today and we'll first begin with the Central Plains and this is an area that we have some pretty interesting storm activity that's been ongoing throughout the afternoon there are some showers and even a few few storms ongoing down there nothing too crazy overall we don't have a whole lot of severe weather there is a low chance for severe weather today in parts of the Mississippi Valley back near Arkansas maybe Missouri but overall the risk of that is fairly low throughout the afternoon and evening but still very interesting overall a little bit of a low pressure spin there near the surface back over to the west we have our heat dome that continues to dominate and this is in the upper levels which is making very hot conditions continue across parts of the southern plains in the southwest United States over in DFW we have record breaking high temperature potential today some areas as high as 110 degrees it will be very hot across the southern plains today meanwhile back over in the northeast we have this low pressure system spinning back up in Canada and this is actually allowing for some nice cooler weather for parts of the northeast right now and that's allowing for a bit more of a northwesterly wind and that's going to continue to usher in some cooler weather over the next couple days and while that happens we're watching another area for storm development over the next few days there will be a low pressure system that will become more defined as we go throughout the week that'll move to the east and bring the threat for maybe some severe weather across parts of the northern plains and the midwest and we'll talk about more on this later in this forecast so make sure that you definitely stay tuned for that now let's talk more about the weather pattern that's impacting the United States currently because we have a lot of stuff that's happening. We have that massive heat dome that's currently sitting in the central and southern plains that is bringing that excessive heat to many areas, especially Texas right now. And then here's your jet stream that's lifted back up to the north through parts of the Midwest and into the northeast. And then your trough that I was mentioning before that's in the parts of Canada that's allowing for some southerly winds, allowing for a bit of, or northerly winds, allowing for a bit of a cool down for parts of the northeast. And this pattern will continue for the next several days but there will be some notable changes so once we go into tuesday into wednesday notice where the jet stream is located it's actually going to be lifting further back up to the north we'll still have somewhat of a cool down in the northeast but notice where the trough is that's going to be that next storm that we'll be watching for maybe for a little at low end threat for some severe weather that'll be located back up in southern canada and this can allow for some severe weather across parts of the midwest and as well as the northern plains meanwhile that heat dome continues to dominate across the southern plains but we really need to watch some Something closely and that would be where this high pressure system goes because the further west it goes that would allow for some little bit of at least cooler weather across parts of like the eastern United States and perhaps even in the Great Plains but if it goes further to the east that would allow for hotter weather to start to go toward areas like the southeast United States so the direction of where this goes is very crucial over the next several days but what the European model is currently indicating is by Thursday to Friday the heat dome doesn't really move much it's still down there in the southern plains through Friday the high or the low pressure system that'll bring that threat for maybe some isolated severe weather in the upper Midwest and the Northern Plains will continue to move to the east with an additional storm possible back up that direction. Jet stream becomes much weaker as we go into Friday and eventually by Saturday into Sunday, the heat dome moves much further off to the west. The main area where it'll be centered is back down into the Southwest United States. Meanwhile, this will allow for this jet stream to actually become much weaker and that could allow for a little bit of a cool down for parts of the Northern Plains in the Midwest. Not really looking at anything too significant though in terms of severe severe weather because the jet stream will be very disorganized and not very strong and this is just going to allow for a mix of really not a whole lot of severe weather and it's also going to become a much more zonal jet stream which means that this will be much more straight lined we're not going to have all that curvature that we currently have which that curvature is a meridional jet stream which usually those can bring more severe weather sometimes more significant because we have more of that southwesterly wind that kind of aids the threat for more severe weather and increases the tornado risk but we really don't have a whole lot of that for the next several days if not even for the next couple week so some good news at least in terms of the significant severe weather potential but let's talk more about the severe weather threat for the next few days and we'll begin with today there are currently 
five different areas with marginal threats of severe weather as of two o'clock this afternoon central time this is obviously going to change at three o'clock since there's a new storm prediction center update but as of right now we do have a marginal threat of severe weather back in the northern and central plains throughout the high plains another marginal threat down in arizona and arizona desperately needs rain so that high pressure system now moving over here is actually helping to increase the risk for at least some showers and storms which is really needed phoenix arizona all month long has hit 110 degrees every single day so obviously need some relief there back over in parts of Missouri and as well as Arkansas and Louisiana we have a couple marginal risks of severe weather that primarily was for this morning and as well as the early afternoon there's still a low chance for maybe an isolated severe storm during the late evening and then back over in parts of the east coast and the southeast United States another marginal threat you might be wondering we've had a slight risk of severe weather every single day this month as of right now we don't have a slight risk so this could be our only day of the month without a slight risk of severe weather which would end the streak overall let's talk a little bit more about the timing for severe storms back over in the central plains is really the only area that we're going to cover because it's really the most concerning area which even then it's not that concerning we'll have some storms throughout the late afternoon evening hours back over in wyoming and colorado they will slowly move to the east mainly a damaging wind threat i'm not expecting any tornadoes really today there's like a very low chance of that it's below two percent from the storm prediction center and then once we go closer to midnight or so storms will move off to the east into nebraska still watching for maybe some isolated damaging winds perhaps a little bit of sporadic hail but again nothing that crazy for today once we go to tomorrow things start to ramp up just a bit back over in the northern plains we do have a slight risk of severe weather and this could also grow a little bit but right now that's the slight risk for minnesota as well as north dakota and then another couple areas to watch for we have another marginal threat across the central plains that's primarily for large hail and damaging winds same thing by the way for the northern plains and then back over in the east coast in the southeast another small chance for isolated damaging winds maybe a little bit of sporadic large hail up to about quarter size now for the timing back over in the northern plains storms will be possible actually during the morning hours and that's going to be from a complex of storms that'll start to weaken as it moves out of canada into parts of minnesota and north dakota damaging winds is the main concern out of that throughout the afternoon more storms will start to fire up and that will increase the risk for large hail and damaging winds couldn't rule out an isolated tornado but i think the threat overall is again low and then once we go into the mid to late afternoon hours more storms will fire up again a lot of storm activity and we'll be watching at least for some scattered severe weather with damaging winds large hail being the main concerns and eventually by the late evening into the overnight hours most of the storm activity is weakening out and by the morning hours on wednesday there shouldn't really be much severe weather remaining now this is the interesting storm that i've been talking about is really going into tomorrow and as well as into wacky weather wednesday we have another marginal threat of severe weather for the upper mid west i wouldn't rule out this gets upgraded to possibly a slight risk but it might also expand just a little bit across more of wisconsin and maybe a little bit more of michigan but overall the threat of severe weather is not going to be significant and the main reason why is because the low level jet will not be really cranking much it'll be strong enough for some isolated severe weather but most of that should honestly stay back up in canada so there we might get a little bit of a break of that at least in the upper midwest but there should at least be a little bit of isolated severe weather another thing we have to look at is the instability there will not be that much instability available around a thousand to two thousand joules per kilogram that is plenty for severe weather but it's not going to be off the charts by any means so at least some good news there and then the moisture content overall at least in terms of dew points they're not going to be very high dew points in the 60s maybe the upper 50s and that overall is not going to create an environment where severe weather is very you know prominent because of the dew points and as well as the buoyancy is going to be very low out of a severe weather event like this so overall i'm not too concerned right now about this but it is still something to watch in case the ingredients become more available as we get closer to wacky weather wednesday thank you so much for watching make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already